What's happening, y'all? Uh, just here, we're going to show you some layout stuff. I actually, I want to show you the difference between the RAT theory, the RAT theory, and uh, of laying out bowling balls, and actually using dual angles and doing it the correct way. So we've got ourselves one of the new swag balls, the ace here. We're actually going to lay this thing out and figure out what we want to do with it. Uh, and I'm going to run you through exactly how to lay it out. But first, let's talk about the RAT theory. So the RAT theory is something that's used by a lot of tour guys. Most of y'all don't know what that means. That actually means the uh, the right about eh, there, you know, R-A-T, right about there. They go ahead and they put their hand on the ball and they say, yeah, I want the I want the pin right about there. And my they have no idea. <laughs> they just, they know what works for them. Like a lot of the tour guys say, ah, I get my best reaction when the CGs kick this much and the pin is up here. You know, they just kind of guess. They just try to throw it wherever, you know, uh, I like it above my middle finger or I like it below my, my bridge or whatever it may be. It's right about there. So they do that and then they'll just draw their single line with that, with their center line and they'll call it good. Um, I like to be a little bit more precise and I think a lot of, a lot of bowlers are starting to uh, understand this a little bit more and starting to do more with layouts and stuff. So um, we're going to show you exactly what this means to lay out a ball. Now this is just a symmetrical hybrid here. So there's no mass bias. You can see there's no markings down here. We've just got the CG and the pen. Uh, and the first step is to go ahead and draw a straight line from your pen through your CG. And that gives you your first line there, just a basis to go off of. And technically somewhere right around here would be the mass bias before the ball is drilled. And we're going to put the zero. You got the zero on this here, right here. Zero is going to go on the pen. And this line right here goes leading back through the line you just drew. Now, all these markings over here are degrees. You've got from zero all the way up to 85-ish degrees. Um, the lower you start this number, the more you're going to be kicking out the uh, the CG. You're going to be kicking everything out sideways more. The higher you, you put your degree on this one, the less you're going to be kicking the CG. On a ball like this, this number doesn't really matter other than aesthetics. Some people like to see their CG kicked out. Some people like it straight up and down. It just depends on you. On an asymmetric ball, this does matter. Now, the closer to 20 degrees, generally you don't go any lower to 20. The closer to 20 degrees you go, the earlier that ball is going to get started. The earlier that core is going to try to start taking over. Okay, And then the later, the higher, closer to 80, 85 degrees you go, the later that core is going to try to get started. So it's just the de depending on, do you want the core to be sitting? Hold on, let me grab a, a core here. So do you want the core sitting straight up and down like this? Or do you want it sitting sideways to where it's rotating and flopping this way? Or do you want it going this way? Okay, so that's basically all you're trying to decide. Now, for me on this one, I like to I like to have the CG kicked a little bit, about 45 degrees on a symmetrical ball. That's about right. So we're going to go 45, make the mark at 45, and then straight from your pen through that mark all the way down. Now, this angle from here to here is your 45 degrees, Okay. So now you want to figure out flare potential. How much do I want this ball to flare? How much do I overall want this ball to hook? Do I want to give it its maximum potential to hook? Or do I want to take some of that potential away? And the closest to 3 and 3 eighths you go, so right about there, would be max flare potential. You're going to make this ball flare as much as it possibly can, and it's going to uh, try to hook as much as it possibly can. I don't want max flare. I actually want to pull some away. But I am still going to go fairly strong. I'm going to go four and a half over here. So I make a mark at forty-five or at four and a half from the center of the pin, and then I set the zero up again, the zero on the prosec, and I'm going to set it up right on that mark. And then it's going to go straight up and down just like this. Now, when we flip the ball over and we look here, now we can see degrees again. Now we're trying to figure out the third angle, which is your val line, your VAL. Um, what we're looking for here is the closer to 20 or technically the lower the number on your degree angles here, the taller you're going to make the pin, the higher you're going to put the core. So essentially you're setting it up like the, the lower you put the, the, the number, the more you're moving the core this way like that. The lower means the more you're moving the core this way, which gets the pin to be down. Okay. Does that make sense? Cause the top of this would be the pin. So for me, and this also will make it your response time. 
Like how much will this ball respond to friction? You know, so, and, and it's not gonna be the same. Just because you do 30 degrees on this ball doesn't mean it's gonna respond the same amount of quickness as something like that Tundra there. You know, it's just, it's not gonna quite be the same. Different cover stocks, you know, the, the, there's just variables that go into this. But for me, I wanna get this one to respond fairly well. So I'm gonna go with 30 degrees, closer, down a little bit lower, which is gonna put the pen pretty tall. So now with that mark that I just made, I'm gonna put my pencil right on that mark. And then I'm drawing it through that four and a half inch mark that I made already. So from there, straight through that mark and down. Now that's your VAL. Now this right here, from there to there is your 30 degrees. You can see that's a little bit smaller angle than this. This is 15 degrees more, obviously. Okay. So now we have to take into consideration what our positive axis point is. This is why this is so important because now this layout is going to be based on how I roll the ball specifically, you know, in my general normal release, because obviously your PAP changes a little bit as you change the way you release it. So I am going to now from this mark, this is technically supposed to be your positive axis point because that will get you 45 degree, four and a half inches from that spot. So off this vertical axis line, the VAL, I am four and three quarters over and an inch and an eighth up. So I need this spot to be up. So I need to measure down. So inch and an eighth down. So now that is an inch and an eighth up, which makes my PAP. And then I measure over four and three quarter inches which will be right about there. See, rat theory again, right about there. All right, except it's measured. So then from that, that is your center line. So now we make a mark all the way up, all the way up and down. And this is gonna be your layout, just like this. So now that's the center of your grip, which means your fingers will be like this and your thumb will be down here. You can see that CG is kicked 45 degrees, okay? So boom, 45 degrees here, 45, 30. This is what we end up with, so for me, after this, you make your measurements. I've got a good old, uh, what am I, four and three eighths? All the way, so I go to two and three thirty seconds there is basically, it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm just measuring off that. And again, if it's not perfect, it's not going to change your layout. And honestly, the layout is going to determine so little of your reaction. It's all going to be mostly your cover stock, the surface you put on the cover stock. Um, but we can, we can manipulate it just a little bit. We can make the ball do different things. So but cover stock is obviously the most important. But if you're actually wanting to learn and get into layouts, this is what we do. So go get yourself a pro set. Head over to bowlerx.com. You can probably get one of these or get one of the cheaper ones, whichever way you want to do it. Um, and you can get one of these and you can start laying out your own bowling balls and figuring out what your layouts are on your bowling balls. Uh, maybe that's the next video that I'll do. I'll show you how to figure out what your layouts are on your bowling ball specifically. So that's all I got for you today. This was laying out the ace for you. So now we know exactly what these numbers mean and what we can do with them. Uh, and you'll now know exactly what they're talking about when you go into a pro shop and they're telling you we're gonna lay it out this way or that way. Assuming they find your PAP, they should. Again, if they're not taking you out on the lanes, and trying to find your PAP, and so that way they can do a layout like this and get it proper for you. Because if they do the rat theory, so let, like, let's just say for me, if I do a rat theory and I would, be, I'm like, okay, I want to do like what they normally say um, and do, I want it like where they normally will lay it over like this. This is going to be too close for me. That's going to end up being like a three inch pin if I were to do it like that. That would, and that's what they would normally do is most pro shops just put the pin up there because they don't know. They just try to get it within the circle above the ring and generally you're pretty close. But if that pin is too close, now you're taking away flare potential and you're going to smooth that ball reaction out too much. Or vice versa, if they were for some reason like you sell them, you want it to go long. And they're like, okay, well, we'll just put the pin way away. And they put it way, way over here. And now your PAP is way over here. Now you're seven, six and a three quarter inch. Now you're inverting the flare and the ball's not going to hook at all. So this is why layout is important and finding your PAP is important for things like this. So you can get your ball to do exactly what it's supposed to do. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button, comment below, head over to 10pindoctors.com, get signed up for the membership where you can learn what all this stuff means. We got the knowledge base and everything over there. So go check it out. Um, and until next time, we'll see you guys later.